you guys welcome back so if you guys follow me on instagram i'm sure you've heard once or twice or maybe a thousand times about my gluten-free diet i am constantly talking about it i do what i eat in a day every tuesday on my stories and i'm just always posting recipes and gluten-free replacements it's just become really integrated in my content so i wanted to bring that more on my youtube channel um because i do have a few videos on here if you guys want to check them out i have a video all about why i went gluten-free and then a few like what i eat in a day what i eat in a week if you guys want to see an updated version of a gluten-free what i eat in a week comment below and i will film that for you guys in the coming weeks so today i'm just sharing all of my gluten-free favorites just basically my master list of things that i love and what i've just weeded through over the years I have been gluten-free for six years now, so I feel like I've tried pretty much everything. A lot has come out in the past six years, so I feel like I have tried the best and the worst. And today we're gonna talk about the best, in my humble opinion. So let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm ready to talk about my favorite topic food. So if any of you guys are watching this, just starting your gluten-free diet out, comment below. I would love to hear from you guys and just kind of how you're doing on the start of your journey. I know it can be really difficult, but I promise you it gets easier and it becomes second nature. This is just the way I live my life now. I don't even think about it. I mean, I feel like if anything, I'm even more excited about food than I was before because I'm so grateful of the things that I am able to eat. So when there's a gluten-free option at a restaurant or if there's a gluten-free dedicated bakery, or you know, let's say Oreo comes out with a gluten-free Oreo, I just feel extremely grateful and those are just like amazing wins. So um, let me know in the comments. But before I get into the products, I do want to mention this app that I recently downloaded that I don't know why it took me so long to download it. It's called GF Scanner. And the reason I have this is because sometimes things are not labeled gluten-free um, and maybe they're not in the ingredients, but you're still kind of like, you really want to be sure, especially if you have celiac, you have to be extremely careful in what you eat. Um, so if there's something I'm a little bit hesitant on or if I'm just not sure about an ingredient, I can look it up on the app or just scan the label and it has been so helpful. It can be kind of tricky. So I just have that like for safety. So I just wanted to shout that out. It might make your life a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and get into my favorites. So I'm going to start with bread because honestly, I feel like that is what people think of most when they hear gluten free or if they hear, you know, that they need to go gluten free, you think, how am I not gonna have bread anymore? Like bread is life. I was a huge bread girl and I honestly, you guys, if I could go without normal bread, you can. Like I feel like I lived off of sourdough bread. Like I had it every single morning. After all these years, I feel like I have finally found really good replacements. They're not mediocre. They're actually really, really bomb. So first bread that I wanted to mention is Cook's sourdough bread. This is the holy grail of gluten-free bread. Like I promise you guys, you will not have better. It's a bit trickier to find, but you can order it on their website, which is great because they're a small business. So you will be supporting small. Um, so this is cooked sourdough bread and it's not like the traditional like sourdough loaf where the pieces are really large. Um, it's more like sandwich bread, um, but it has that like sourdough texture. It's just incredible. I do like to buy it online too because you do get a bit of a deal when you bundle. I love to get the bundle that has rosemary bread, French bread, and the original sourdough. There's like this weird thing I've noticed about gluten-free bread over the years is that some brands have like this certain smell that really turns me off like i will talk about which brand it is in a little bit but this bread doesn't have any like weird smell it smells like real bread it doesn't smell like artificial or weird you will hear me say the word texture a lot like you know drinking game idea take a shot every time i say texture or if i say the words gluten-free because you will be hammered texture is a huge thing with a gluten-free diet because really that is what you're sacrificing in a gluten-free item you don't have that binder or the flour or the wheat or you know whatever it is in the product that kind of you know gives it the texture and the feel of the food um so if a gluten-free item has good texture that's a huge win and that is i think what is most important with these substitutes because that's really what you're sacrificing um but that bread incredible let's move on because i have a lot of stuff to share the next bread is from coco bakes and this is another one that you have to order online i have not seen sourdough loaves at really any grocery store, um, especially like a fresh baked loaf, like a classic bakery loaf. If you guys have a local gluten-free bakery and they make bread, definitely try that out. I discovered these, I would say, you know, maybe like four years ago. Um, it's a small bakery in LA, but they do ship all over the country. Um, and I was just really fiending for that real sourdough bread. One day I do want to get the loaf and kind of hollow it out and make my own bread bowl because I've been craving that for the past six years. I feel like I have so many random things that I just like want to make 
make gluten-free that I grew up on or you know always had um, that I can't eat anymore so I really want to do that I just every time I get it I want to like you know ration out the bread so that I can enjoy it instead of using an entire loaf obviously um, but I'm gonna do that one of these days because that sounds incredible so Coco Bakes amazing sourdough bread you can order online I highly recommend it next bread that I wanted to mention is Canyon Bakehouse so I have specific breads that I like from them I do not love all of them they're normal like I think it's deli sliced bread that's the bread that has kind of the weird smell. I will eat it if that's literally my only option because it's okay. I don't know what that smell is. Maybe someone could tell me. Um, it's a certain ingredient they put in it. I don't know. Um, and even the texture is a bit spongy, but they do, the rest of their stuff that I'm gonna mention doesn't have that weird smell. So just keep that in mind. The Candy Bakehouse Heritage Style Whole Grain Bread is really good as well as the Heritage Style um, honey white. He is to get the heritage style, not just like the normal deli slice. I believe that's what it's called. If it's not, I'll put a picture up on the screen. That's the one with the funky smell. Sorry, Kenyon Bakehouse. I love you and you've made my life a lot easier, but that bread is not it. Okay. Um, so I love those breads for their sliced bread, but what I think they do really, really great is the more like, um, carby <laughs> breads, like bagels, English muffins, hot dog buns. Well, actually, sorry, they don't have hot dog buns, hamburger buns, but I love their hamburger buns. Their bagels are great. Um, I love the everything bagels, the plain bagels, really any of the bagels are great. And then the last few mentions that I wanted to share about the bread is Udi's hot dog buns. I am not a huge Udi's girly girl like I don't they I feel like they're honestly like the starter pack for gluten-free but I don't even want to throw any shade because I do feel like they were like trailblazers for the gluten-free diet like they were always the ones that I could count on you know five years ago when I didn't know what I was doing and there wasn't as many options they were at every grocery store they had their whole section in the refrigerated section and they just like killed it and i do appreciate them for that but i do think there's so many better options out there but i do love their hot dog buns for some reason um i didn't know these existed like i mean it's been a long time like maybe this was five years ago when i first my first year of being gluten-free i didn't have a hot dog for a while and a hot dog wasn't something that I necessarily loved more than anything when I had a normal diet, but there is, you know, just this weird thing about when you're told you can't have something that suddenly makes you want it really bad. Like I didn't even think about hot dogs and all of a sudden I couldn't have a hot dog on 4th of July and I was like, I am dying for a hot dog. Like I would kill for a hot dog. So I found these and I had my hot dog on 4th of July and it was life changing. Like I felt so special and so included. Like. There's just like an appreciation that you have for food when you have a specific diet. I know my sister feels the same way. She's vegan and I feel like she just like really gets extremely excited about food and things that she can have. If there's a vegan option, it's like no one is more grateful. So that's kind of how I feel with gluten-free options. It's just like, you know, nice to be included. Um, and then the last bread I wanted to mention is this brand Char. Um, I love their gluten-free baguettes. It's just nice to have a baguette every once in a while. Next category is Pasta. I'm dedicating a whole category to pasta. I think bread is like a first thought and then maybe pasta is a second thought because you think how am I ever gonna have pasta again if I'm gluten-free? Like what is life without pasta? Um, and I'm here to tell you there are good gluten-free pastas. Like I promise you they there's some that taste exactly the same. There's some that are really bad. So I'm just gonna say that do not you know completely throw gluten-free pasta out the window if you have one bad one because I I swear to you there are some really terrible ones out there that just have the worst taste. I wasn't gonna throw them under the bus but I just have to say it like it needs to be said. Bonza, what they're doing is criminal. Like their pasta you guys, chickpea pasta tastes like dirt and if you like that because you think oh it's good for it being gluten-free, no, there's so many better options out there. And if you just genuinely like it, you love the taste of chickpeas, that's fine. I'm not gonna yuck your yums. But I'm just here to tell you, if you tried that and you didn't like it, there's better options out there. Don't feel down about not having good pasta. Bonza is not the end all be all. I will never buy another Bonza product again. I'm sorry to say it. No shade to them. Okay. Um, Delalo makes incredible pasta. I really love their shells. Like the shells are so good. I would eat them with just butter. Like they're so bomb. I love their shells. I love their penne. I love their fusilli. It's amazing. I don't really buy their spaghetti or fettuccine. I think they're longer noodles, um, kind of get a bit mushy for some reason. That's a great brand. And I'm just gonna say it, I also like the Berea brand. It's not made from, you know, like black lentils and like everything organic, but it's really accessible. Wait, you know what? Oh, it says non-GMO certified. I thought it said organic. Okay, 
they're not organic, but whatever. Um, it's not like, <laughs> pasta is pretty indulgent anyways. So, you know, if I can get a good option, honestly, they make incredible pasta and it's really accessible. You can get it at almost any grocery store. Um, and like I said, I'm just happy to be included. Like, I'm just glad that that's there on the shelf. I love that like the bigger brands have gluten-free options now. It's not just like all of the health food stores. So they make really good fettuccine and really good spaghetti. Like the texture's on point. You just really, the only thing about gluten-free pasta, you have to be sure to not overdo it. Just really with any pasta. I mean, not just gluten-free, uh, but really try not to overcook it because it will turn to mush as most pastas do, but I feel like it could happen really easily with gluten-free pasta. So if that happens to you the first time you try gluten-free pasta, if you like it's mushy and it's not good, you probably just need to cook it a little bit less. I don't think that it's the pasta is bad. It just was overcooked. I'm just gonna include this in this category. I guess we're just talking all about carbs right now. Um, gluten-free pizza crust is actually become something that is pretty easy to find. And it's in a lot of places, even restaurants and pizza places. You would be surprised how many restaurants offer gluten-free crust if you just ask. But I wanted to shout out a few gluten-free crusts that I really, really love. First one is a mix, not a crust, but this one is great. It's Bob's Red Mill. Love that brand. I have another product from them in this video that I will share in a little bit. Um, but they do a really good crust. You can, you know, mix it yourself and let it rise and then you roll it out and kind of make it to your desired thickness, which I think is what is amazing about this because a lot of the time gluten-free crust is just flat crust. It's like flat bread. There's no, not even like actual crust on it. Um, and that's just kind of, you know, the life that I live now and I do like thin crust, but every once in a while I want a real piece of pizza. Marcus and I have made this multiple times when we have like a little pizza night and make it like a whole thing. We have wine and we do a few different pizzas and like roll it out. It's really cute. Not only can you roll it out to make it how you want, it is actually really, really good too. It like is biscuity and like just, just so good. So I'll put a picture up on the screen of our pizzas. I think it's delicious. So love that. And then kind of in that same realm, not a mix, but a dough. This is wholly gluten-free pizza dough. So this you buy frozen, I'm pretty sure. So you need to let it thaw for a little bit. If you like, you know, if you're planning to make it that night, you will have to probably wait till the next day. And it is really delicious. So I love their dough, but also love their pre-made um, pizza crust. They have like little more like miniature size gluten-free pizza crust. And honestly, I haven't had too many bad pizza crusts from the grocery store. Um, there's a lot of really good options now. The only thing that I don't really do is cauliflower crust. Um, I think there's some good ones out there, but that for me, like if I'm eating a pizza, I'm, it's, I, I don't want a cauliflower crust. Like, I'm just sorry I'm saying it. I'm offending the chickpea and the cauliflower community right now. I'm very sorry, don't cancel me. But there is just like, that's not what I'm looking for. I do like cauliflower, but not a cauliflower crust. I feel like the, it's just not on point in my opinion. If you have a really amazing cauliflower crust to recommend to me, go ahead. I probably need to start substituting for a cauliflower crust just kind of to be a little bit healthier. But anyways, let's get into the next category. I'm calling this essentials because these are kind of things that I just consistently have in my kitchen and um, things that I use a lot. So first one being flour. I mean, it doesn't get any more essential than that. I love the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour. You can substitute it in any recipe with the same amount. If you have a recipe for you know chocolate chip cookies and it calls for a cup of flour, you can substitute it with a cup of gluten-free flour, the same. So um, I think that's really great. And I've been really happy with this. I've been using it for years. I have tried different ones um, and I've never been like extremely disappointed in any of them, but I've heard really good things about, I think it's cup for cup flour and I do need to try that. I've just never seen it at the store. And then next I have some rolled oats. So oats are something that you need to look out for, um, for, you know, gluten ingredients because not a lot of oats are gluten-free. Um, so I always get a gluten-free rolled oat and this is my favorite brand, One Degree Organics. They're organic, non-GMO, and they're free of this chemical that is in a lot of oats. I am not even gonna try to pronounce it because I'm probably gonna say it wrong. I actually heard about this brand from Cocoa Bakes. That is the bakery that makes the sourdough bread. They have some other things too, if you guys wanna check them out. They don't only sell sourdough bread. They have like rolls and cookies and cakes and stuff too. But she shared this because she was just kind of mentioning how so many oatmeals or oats have um, such bad ingredients, like almost cancer causing ingredients. And I asked her, I was like, so what do you recommend? Because I love oatmeal. And she mentioned One Degree Organics. So I've been buying from them ever since and I just feel good about it. I have oatmeal all the time. I love to make a brown sugar cinnamon oatmeal. Oatmeal cookies, I love to make homemade granola, um, maybe granola bars, just in all kinds of different things. I feel like I use oats a lot. So I really wanted a like healthier option because you know, you gotta offset like the Bria pasta with like One Degree Organics oatmeal, you know? 
balance. Next up we have some mixes that I wanted to share. Um, you know, you could do everything from scratch if you wanted, but I love to have these on hand. They're just kind of, you know, make life a little bit easier when you just want, you know, maybe a little Saturday morning pancake. And they are a small business too, so great to support. This is Josie's Best. They make all these mixes that are so amazing. I love all of them. I recently tried the crepe one last year, recently, last year, whatever. Um, I had never made crepes in my life. I made them for my entire family and everyone loved them. It was definitely a lot of work, but it was worth it. They were incredible. Um, and the pancakes, it's kind of become a tradition when we go on like family trips to like Lake Tahoe or Big Bear, like to the mountains. I always make pancakes. Um, for breakfast one day and I always just bring this mix and it's just nice to kind of you know just bring the mix and not have to go and buy flour and everything else that needs to go in the pancakes um, and they're so good they're always really delicious so the pancakes are amazing the waffles are amazing and the muffin and more mix is basically a gluten-free baking flour okay last item in this category that I wanted to mention siete tortillas specifically the burrito size tortillas these changed my life for the better, you guys. I was dying for a real burrito when I went gluten-free and like over the years because there are a lot of gluten-free flour tortillas, um, but they're always small. Why is everything gluten-free so tiny? I have no idea. They're always like, you know, almost like normal size corn tortilla size, a little bit bigger, but not big enough for like a full rolled burrito. Like I really just wanted like a bean and cheese burrito or a breakfast burrito, like an actual sized one. So um, when these came out, I was ecstatic. I couldn't find them at my stores for a little bit, but I finally got them and wow, they are amazing. I do like their normal size cassava flour tortillas too. I actually just had them yesterday and made quesadillas, um, but the burrito size are fabulous. If you're craving like a real, breakfast burrito. Siete is an amazing brand and they have great chips and snacks and cookies. Um, I love pretty much everything from them. I have not been disappointed by any of their products. So next category is snacks. I could talk about snacks for days. If someone said I could spend a thousand dollars in the snack aisle or the snack aisles. I probably could. That's so much money, but you guys know what I mean. Like I feel like I literally could throw everything in my cart. Snack aisle is really somewhere that like the gluten-free labels go ham. People, it just becomes so popular now. So there's so many gluten-free options in crackers, chips, granola bars, you name it. Like there's so many things, especially if you're at like a Sprouts or a Whole Foods, like that is my heaven. I love to snack and I just love seeing all the gluten-free stuff everywhere. It's just, I love it so much. So I have a lot of snacks I could share. We could do a whole video about it if I really wanted to. I'm just gonna mention like the top of the top for me, which is what this whole video is supposed to be anyways. So um, first up that I wanted to share in snacks, this could have easily gone in essentials category because this to me is an essential in my diet and in my pantry. Blue Diamond Nut Thins, you guys. I could live off of this cracker. I am not bullshitting you. Like. This is my favorite cracker of all time. I love the taste and how crunchy they are, but I also use them as like a vehicle for other things. Like I eat them with tuna all the time, with chicken salad, with salami and cheese, on a cheese board, like they, are just fabulous. I love just the original one to have those on hand because I like to snack on all these, but I also like have them for like lunches, like with tuna and stuff, like I mentioned. So um, I eat them all the time. So these are my favorite. They're made from almonds, they're made from nuts and I just love it so much. So um, next cracker is Mary's Gone Cracker. These I like to call like bird food crackers. <laughs> I don't think they'd be for everyone because they're literally just like made from seeds and they're so seedy. Like when you look at them, like it looks like, you know, just bird food, but they're so good and I do really like them. They're really good on a cheese board with like some fig jam and some Gouda cheese. Fabulous. And then I do have one more cracker. So Simple Mills made from almond flour. These are great. They have original sea salt, which I love. And then also farmhouse cheddar, which for me has been like a cheese it substitute. I could eat the entire box in one sitting. They're fabulous. And then I have this brand Quinn Snacks. They make amazing pretzels. They have peanut butter filled sea salt sticks, and then also just like the classic pretzel twists. They're all so good. And those are the best gluten-free uh, pretzels that I've ever tried. For potato chips, that could be an entire video as well. I could do like a whole series on my channel about all the different forms of potatoes that I love, but we're gonna just keep it to one brand really quick. Um, Kettle brand potato chips. These are my favorite potato chips of all time and all the flavors are gluten-free, which is just 
a blessing from God himself. And then for just a few granola bars that I wanted to share, I love granola bars. Nature's Bakery, I think that's the brand, um, is incredible. I actually have them in my pantry right now. I grew up on Nutri-Grain bars. I took one to school every single day, so I would die for one of those. I wish that I could eat them, but Nature's Bakery is kind of like a close second in that same flavor. They are not gluten-free originally, but they do have a gluten-free version. So make sure you see the gluten-free label if you're looking for those, because um, not every store has the gluten-free version. Um, but then Kind Breakfast Bars, I love these. Kind is a great brand, so many gluten-free options. They have a ton of different granola bars, cereals, granola, um, whatever else they sell, it's all great. Um, but I specifically love their almond butter and peanut butter breakfast bars. They're like a dessert, like an oatmeal cookie, but they're so good. So I think that's it for my snack category. I am gonna move on to our last one, which is typically the last thing of my day, sweets. <laughs> I have become such a sweet tooth over the last six years because I never, I would always describe myself as like a salty kind of person, <laughs> salty food over sweet food. That's kind of how I always was. And now I would gladly take both. I actually need both in my life because I am the kind of person that has dinner and I am like, what's for dessert? Like Marcus could attest to this. I feel like after every single dinner, I'm like, hmm, I want something sweet. Like, <laughs> It's just so bad. Like I know it's like a total mindset thing, but even if it's something so simple, like just like a few chocolate covered almonds, like I'll be satisfied with that. Don't get me wrong. There are times where I want like frozen yogurt or like a milkshake or whatever. So speaking of cookies, I wanted to share a few like frozen cookie doughs. First are the Sweet Lorenz. I'm sure, oh gosh, it's Sweet Lorenz. I don't know why I always call it Lorenz. It's spelled in a different way than I normally see Lauren spelt. So I always want to call it Lorenz and make it sound fancier. Sweet Lauren's. There's a few different flavors, but my favorites are the chocolate chunk and the sugar cookie. I love these because you can eat the dough. They're vegan and gluten-free. And what else? It says gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, peanut slash tree nut free. I love to eat the dough. Like I could eat an entire container of just the dough because um, it's delicious, but it, they are really good when you bake them too. So love this brand. And then randomly, Marcus discovered these and he loves these cookies. Um, these are randomly the most amazing gluten-free cookies. The brand is immaculate, honestly delicious, but they make this gluten-free chocolate chunk frozen cookie dough and it makes the most amazing cookies. For some reason, we started always bringing them to our family dinners. We always have like a family dinner on Thursday. We would start bringing it for dessert and everyone loves them. Like my brother-in-law was like, are you sure these are gluten-free? I remember he said that the first time we got them and I was like, that's when you know it's good when someone that is not gluten-free is saying like, are you sure? Because this is too good. And that's honestly like, also like the stigma, like if it's gluten-free, it's not good. I'm telling you, you guys, there's good things out here. Do not take the shitty thing that you tried and assume that's what gluten-free things taste like. These are delicious, okay? Um, speaking of delicious, we have Tate's gluten-free cookies. They make normal cookies and I, my dad would always buy these. He always got the macadamia nut um, and white chocolate ones. Those are so good. This is more of like a, you know, a thin crispy cookie compared to like the chocolate chunk immaculate cookie. Those are more, um, like soft and doughy. And like I mentioned, Oreo now makes a gluten-free Oreo, which I can only buy them like once every few months because the first time I tried them, I think I ate the entire container or the entire pack in one weekend. I hadn't had Oreos in five years and that used to be my favorite cookie. And I do think Oreos are also vegan. So like what a win for both of us. Come together, we got the vegan gluten-free Oreos. Like. Thank you, honestly, like what a blessing. Okay, I have a few little random like frozen items that I just wanted to share really quickly because I have really been loving them. Um, Applegate chicken nuggets and their chicken tenders. Amazing, love them. I have them in my freezer right now. I've made like chicken salads with them and like even just, you know, I just dip them in like barbecue sauce. So it's like a normal chicken nugget too. And it's just nice to have that sensation that I don't ever get to have. Vans gluten-free waffles. These are delicious and I've been eating them I think my entire time that I have been gluten-free. Only try to buy them occasionally because it's something that if I had them in my freezer every single day, I would want them for breakfast every single day or as like a dessert, like because they're so good. There's something about like the nostalgic flavor of like a toaster waffle that I just crave. And these Vans really satisfy that craving for me. I love the original and the blueberry. Um, and there is something I kind of forgot to mention in the pasta section that I wanted to share. Speaking of nostalgic flavors, Annie's gluten-free mac and cheese. 
Kraft mac and cheese for me was like one of my favorite things growing up. I think, I mean, every kid loves mac and cheese. Who doesn't like mac and cheese? But that is a flavor that I really would crave um, on occasion. They have a classic cheddar, but also a white cheddar with shells. And it's amazing. I have literally made that gluten-free mac and cheese into like an entire meal um, with like some chicken sausage and like a little bit of broccoli. Like you just like kind of mix it all up and turn it into like a full dish. And it's amazing. I think that's everything that I wanted to share. Um, you know, I could go on and on because there are some really amazing products out there and things that I just love, but I wanted to just share like my top things that I really always buy and that I'm always like restocking that I've just consistently loved over the past six years. So um, if you guys have any questions for me, or like I said, if you were just starting your gluten-free diet, let me know how it's going. Leave it in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys based on anything you saw in this video. Is there any suggestions you have for me? Something I haven't tried, um, any gluten-free options that you would like to let me know about. I would love to hear because I'm always looking for suggestions. Um, and if you guys are starting your diet, good luck. Stay with it. I promise you, your body will thank you if this is what your body needs. It honestly, it changed my life. And like I said, I have an entire video about that journey if you want to hear more about it. But I am so grateful that I discovered what my problem was and you know, it's just changed my life for the better. And now I feel like I have a whole new appreciation for food and it's just like my favorite thing ever. So if you guys want to see an updated what I eat in a week, let me know. You have a lot of things to report down in the comments. If you're going gluten-free, what you thought of this, what your recommendations for me are, and if you want to see the what I eat in a week updated, <laughs> I will film that for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.